Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how to reduce the lag in the game and online. So follow along as I give some tips and hopefully this helps you with your lag. So obviously the first no-brainer thing, which is the easiest but most expensive, is get a new computer or a GPU and or better internet. Now obviously that's not something someone can do all the time. So now we're going to, after covering that, which is an obvious one, we're going to look into some of the other things that can be done in-game especially. Uh, for your computer, you could turn off other processes, like if you have um, the internet on with a bunch of tabs, or if you have, like, um, I don't know, some type of systems running in the background, try to turn them off. I turn off even, like, my OneDrive uploading and Dropbox and all that stuff to kind of keep to a minimum the random processes I have, and it does increase my uh, frame rate. But the rest of the tips that I have are for the actual game itself and how to optimize creations. So let's go to the workshop. So here we are in the workbench, and when we click on spawn, you see these little warning messages pop up on the side, warning this vehicle has a large number of lights, sometimes it says it has a large number of displays, or a large number of physics bodies, we're gonna get into those later. Those are relatively new uh, warnings, but we will optimize our creation based on that. Now, if you click F1, you see this sort of uh, threads profiler pops up and tells you all sorts of information. It tells you the frame rate you're running at, it tells you your physics frame rate, your ocean frame rate, and all sorts of uh, different operations that you have going on at once. Now this is useful just to gauge how you how your uh, settings are placed, like whether or not you should turn down your graphic settings or optimize them a little bit. And of course it tells us about our creation that's in front of us. Now if you press F2, this will happen. Now this is all of your, uh, uh, all of your vehicle physics. My apologies for that. You could see that there's a ton of different shapes that make up even this smaller boat and look at that for where the hot tub is and those little lounge chairs that's really not optimized like you have probably 20 different physics shapes just right there and of course the anchor in the front like this big one is great so the way this is the way this uh physics works is it will render different shapes for your creation because this game lets you build your own shapes or your own vehicles so it can't quite uh, be optimized from, from the get-go like most games like Grand Theft Auto or something the cars will be optimized look at that small the rib I have in the back small looking thing but look at that the amount of physics it has so let's go to the bench and explain this further now there's a great guide on Steam where this user called beginner has uh, created pretty much a detailed explanation of how to optimize your creation. And we'll be going through some of these points that are mentioned here. So in front of us, we'll explain how the different physics work. So in short, this is a single cube that you have or block. This is three blocks or three by three blocks, nine blocks laid out. This is a solid of those three blocks that just place together and this last one has a hollow spot in the middle so while they look relatively simple and are just each one um, physics body if we spawn them and press f2 take a look at this so our single block is just that and so is the sheet of blocks, the nine by nine, the three by three, and the solid cube is also just one single, just like that, one single piece of physics. But look at this. So even though it's the same shape, just because you've left a hollow piece in the middle, look how this thing looks. So there's a ton of different, or not a ton, but there's like 10 different pieces of physics here, just because we have an opening. So what can be done to help that 
if you don't want to fill the whole thing, like say you're using a boat hull, you can't fill it with blocks, otherwise it'll sink, but you could use this physics flutter. Now this is for optimization, and the way it works is it will flood the mass or the flood the inside of the body with physics. So you won't be able to enter it. You can't put multi-body components inside like pivots and stuff because it'll cause it to go crazy and glitch. But what it does is it optimizes it. So let's take a look. Now, what this simple block does, if we add it here, so say we've added this and closed it off versus this large block, which is a, a six by six, and I've installed it right up there, and this one doesn't have it. The small singular space won't be flooded. But let's actually do an experiment. If we make it two pieces, like two, uh, if we make it a uh, one block wider, will it help us? So say it's like this, and we close it off. So now there's two uh, spaces inside here that are flooded. Let's take a look. So there's our blocks. They all look more or less the same if we turn this on. So there we go. The uh, This is one that does not have the physics flutter. Set it so we can see a little better. And then this one has it. So look at that. It's one body. Or one. It's one physics body. Now this is one. This is. This does have the flutter. If we take a look right there, it has it. But because it's only one block, it actually doesn't work. So you. Ha but this one with two it does. So this one is better off just filling. If it's a single void, you will decrease your lag. You'll inc improve your creation optimization. But if it's more than one, you can go ahead and add that flutter, and it will. It will help. So I've done this on my big ships, and I've done it on some of my small ships. So here, back here under the underneath this is where we have the uh, fuel tanks, and right away I always put all three if I could find them. There they are. So I put the flutter, the uh, die, uh, the measurement, like how to measure the body and the spawner. So this whole section here, you could see it's all one big blue piece because that's where the fuel tank is and it's been optimized. And I try to do that as often as possible in the bottom of the bow here as well. If we turn this off. So there's the flutter or not that, not that, um, right there. There we go. The flutter is right there. So it will cause or it, it will merge the bodies into one. Now this helps extremely on larger creations, this optimization, and I strongly do recommend it. Uh, it sometimes gets overlooked with, by people and not quite um, taken seriously, like they'll just make a crazy contraption or whatever and not put it. But I tend to put it anytime I have an enclosed body that I'm not entering, like right there we have another one. And even sometimes on my boats, or ships, what I do is I put like a little repair hatch that you can't even get access into. And I usually write that. So look, repairable access hatch, not enterable. So there, this whole area is flooded by physics, but what you can do is still repair this with a welding torch. You just can't get in there. So I tend to do stuff like this as it will um, help different players with different computers play the game smoothly. Now here we have two of my SAP creations, and what we're going to be discussing is minimizing the body joints, the pivoting joints, and all that stuff. So as you can see on this simple Jeep, there's no rear door, no side doors, it does have a hood release, so there's one single piece that's attached, The one single, so there's really two bodies here, whereas take a look at this one. There's four doors, a tailgate, a hood all that stuff so if we go in the in the workshop and we click on this button merge which talks about the vehicle bodies so look at the simple jeep just uh the hood whereas here we got all this stuff sorry this one's hood doesn't open but all the doors do so this one has two whereas this one has seven and this is just a simple example but let's take a look at the Cochrane. If I turn on this, take a look at these bodies and they're huge. Like, so these ones are massive bodies that will move. And I could find like at least 
probably 20 of them, if not more, with the side doors, these panels, and all that does play a big role. Unfortunately, it will cause your game to want a leg. So you want to minimize your bodies and joints. All these pivots, like see even this crane has this lower green, the upper green, the big boom arm, and this one that goes left and right. So sometimes you just have to have it and it makes sense, you just do it. But when, when possible, you try to minimize the amount of bodies and joints and not have as many. So um, the way the game also works is when you have a joint and you make a jointed door versus this type of door, like it is showing kind of separately, but their door, their pre-made doors, I found are more optimized. You could have a bunch more of these types of doors than what we have back here, where we made our own sort of door out of the sink that moves. And also like steering, steering wheels that have uh, steering built in versus using the pivots, such as this VTOL, as you can see, I have a door here and I could have, I have this uh, joint that spins this wheel down here. I would have been, sorry, the joint does not spin the wheel. I optimized this. The joint only moves the wheel up into the housing, but to turn the wheel, I actually use the wheel's steering function. So I don't have a pivot turning that single wheel, which I found reduces the amount of physics bodies on the creation. And same thing with suspension and rudders and all that stuff. Like if you use a, a built-in rudder versus like th like this guy instead of putting a, a block of a block of blocks that you have a pivot on and move it this is more optimized so you want to minimize the amount of physics bodies sometimes you just have to have them like this door i have to have but i don't have two doors in this case or whatever like i didn't take it to the next level and kind of go crazy with it so that's another item that can be useful back to our massive creation the cochrane size will play a big role so this size is pretty much filled out inside this work station or workbench and sometimes there's people that will mod and make like a titanic like make like four of these ships join together obviously size will cause uh lag that just kind of goes without saying um ob obviously if your st computer's stronger it'll handle it better and whatever but this type of creation versus a small creation such as the uh, rib, if you just spawn the rib, obviously the rib will work a little better <laughs> just because it's much smaller. So that's something else that's just worth noting. Um, if you are finding that you're spawning huge creations and they're very laggy, it may be that. And sometimes creations are more in depth, like they have more functions running. Now this thing has a ton of different functions that I've programmed in. But I found that in certain instances, there's vehicles that have even more and they have like little, I mean, just details and stuff. So it all adds up. And then there's some that are more optimized, like my other vessels that don't have as many functions and they do work a little better than even this Cochrane, which for me causes some lag. And I have a pretty good GPU and computer. So when I spawn the RSV of Allah, look at this large number of monitors, large number of lights. It doesn't say physics, which is good, even though it does have a couple of cranes and helicopters and submarines and stuff. So, but this is, I guess, a good amount of physics. So it's not upset at that, but take a look at the amount of monitors I have just in this room. So look at all these displays. If we turn on the lights, we'll see even better. So there's no displays here, but here we got displays. Here we got a big display. We got a bunch of cameras and stuff. There's a sonar. So there's lots of things going on. If you turn on all these displays, it will cause your game to want to lag just because that's a lot of displays. <laughs> and especially picture in picture stuff like this, it's rare that games have cameras where you could see like live what's going on just because it does create more lag when you have picture in picture. So what I tend to do when I do stuff like this is even, yeah, even though I have a lot of monitors, I try to make them all on individual circuits. So you could turn them on or off independently. You're not, you don't have to run them and that will help you. And then also what I do is if you step out of the room, look at that, 
all the displays turn off. Like if no one is in this room, there will be no cameras or no displays on. If you do leave like uh, the NPC in here, it, the, they, they will stay on. I mean, that just, they work on the switch of the uh, lights or like the player sensor that I have up somewhere. Probably this one, or this one's per this guy, but I have a player sensor in here. Um, Probably I should make it just for the player or player characters, like if you're online, but I have it for NPCs as well. Just if someone's in here, it will have all the computers on, but if you step out, they're off and you could go about your business and just kind of come back to it on. But you just also don't have to keep everything on. I tend to, like I said, the different circuits and switchable. Like, so this set of cameras, like if I had a display of 10 cameras and all them on at once, that's gonna be crazy lag. So what I tend to do is I have them sort of switchable. And same thing with inside the uh, diving bell. If we go down to the uh, diving bell control center in here, as long as it's connected. No, so the diving bell is not connected right now, but what it does is it'll automatically switch between the exterior camera of the diving bell and the interior. So I have a camera, I believe, right there, and then I have a camera inside as well, but the feed just goes through the one single cable and it automatically switches as it's... Uh, trying to find a cable, but anyway, it automatically switches, so you don't have both running at the same time. So I tend to do that to reduce lag. So just to show you, because I talked about it, take a look at this. It'll kind of toggle between the exterior and the interior of the diving bell. So you're not running both cameras at once, you're not creating lag. When we spawned the Avala, it told us we had a large number of lights. And truthfully, I really do like lights. I like when my house is lit up right and all that good stuff. But lights in this game do cause lag because they have to illuminate different areas and different portions of the creation, especially uh, the spotlights. Spotlights I found are the worst, worst, even worse than just uh, the regular kind of lights. Um, since I got my, G my new GPU, this has not been a problem, like you can see right now. But previously, if I turned on all the lights, it would be kind of laggy, especially when we're sitting in, uh, in port with all these different physics around us. Uh, but I do have all my lights on or most of my lights on separate circuits, so I don't have to have all the lights on at once. And even inside the bridge, you could disable it. These red ones, I just keep like here. This is a nice bright, bright room. Obviously, you have to have a bright, a bright uh, galley to eat your dinner and stuff. And same with the hallways. In the crew quarters, I have lights turned like so you turn them off. That's kind of for fun when you're sleeping or whatever. But pretty much, the lights will play a large part. And so will paintable lights, like paintable indicators, and just even regular paintable blocks, because they add more detail that your uh, creation has to spawn. And I found if you put a ton of the paintable cells or paintable indicators and stuff, it will cause more lag than if you just avoid them. So I tend to use them sparingly, maybe for text or some type of detail sometime, but not go just crazy with like, and even in my, uh, research lab technically these displays could be like light up ones with uh gl where they glow but even this is fine i mean it gets the point across that they're uh computer screens and i don't have to have like you know go go any more detail than this to explain what this room is so lights paintable blocks and paintable indicators i found can uh increase lag and you could kind of use them sparingly or where you need to another big cause of lag is the particle effect such as your waves like hitting the bow and water and stuff, and smoke, particularly the exhaust. So with that, I mean, there's not much you can do. Obviously your vehicle, if it's diesel powered, it'll have smoke, or if it's jet powered, it has afterburners or whatever, but it does increase the lag and kind of the, the, the game has to create all this stuff. So what I do, and even if you imagine if you now turn on the generators as well as all these exhausts that we have or all the uh, engine smoke that we have now but let's turn on these generators as well let's make our way back to the bridge so this is a lot of uh, exhaust 
smoke paired with like lights and stuff yeah you can get a reduction in your frame rate so we're still at a steady 60 which is nice again thanks to my new gpu but this is a lot of smoke and check out what you can do oh it's kind of getting slow motion so you can see that it's not really react it's oh yeah there we go so the game tends to not drop in frame rate but it'll go into this like kind of slow motion feel and check this out if we turn off if we turn on infinite fuel and infinite electric it doesn't create exhaust smoke so look at that and if we turn off our lights we're kind of back to normal so the way to counteract that like i said first of all is to not have all your lights on when you're running your all your generators and diesel engines and stuff but also a nice thing that you can do is inside your uh, workbench when you're creating your creation or making your creation you can apply these uh, catalytic converters which will actually reduce the amount of smoke that you have that you produce and it will uh See if I can find them. To be honest, I may not even have the catalytic converters on this creation. No, I don't. Interesting. On this van, we certainly have a catalytic converter. If we follow the exhaust. There we go. So the catalytic converter is there, and all it does is it reduces the amount of smoke and it reduces when the smoke comes out. Like at a lower RPMs, there will be no diesel exhaust or yeah, smoke. Um the reason I didn't put it in the Avala is because those engines are so high strung and at such high RPMs that it I didn't see a practical difference in the amount of output. So I didn't even bother putting a catalytic converter, but that will reduce your uh, lag because you'll have less particles to create. Another thing I found that causes lag sometimes is the, when you have too many ropes kind of dangling about, and this applies to hoses and cables as well. The reason why is because the game has to model all of these different, all the physics of these different ropes and kind of move them independently. They all sort of move around or wiggle around and they do it independently of one another. Now, obviously it doesn't show up in this debugger tool, but look at that. Just the amount of cables that are flopping around here. And the game does have to obviously render something for that. So I found stuff like this. Obviously, my creation, Dubina, does not have this mask. It's not a sailboat, but I just threw this in for the example. I tend to avoid even putting um, ropes sort of on the... Uh, like, sometimes I find creations, and it, honestly, for the best intentions, the owners or the creators will put, like, uh, ropes kind of hanging on the side like this. And I find them useful in the gameplay, because what you could actually do with stuff like that is say you're about to jump in and rescue someone you could easily then grab this rope and attach it to a boat you don't have to go searching for like your rope locker which I tend to have like I tend to have a locker with ropes in this case they're already there now it may be like just having one or two or whatever is fine but I find when you have too many of them and they especially when it's really windy and they start to kind of move around really fast it has, can cause some lag and i mean function over form for me i tend to prefer things that are very useful instead of things that just look really nice so i tend to avoid stuff like that um but obviously everyone has their own computer to worry about and their own abilities and stuff so if you do want to max out your graphics by all means go for it and sometimes it's a matter of style too like here, I, I do have my paintable indicators that are paintable uh, just block, which I tend to avoid. I don't put too, too many of them, but in this case, I found that it added to the style that I wanted to go for in this vessel. So, yeah, that is all the items that I have on this list. Again, thank you to Beginner in the uh, Steam for giving some of these ideas, and the rest I kind of found out over my time building creations hope this uh served you well maybe you'll adapt it into your own creations and hopefully it'll help reduce some lag and play uh help the online play so thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos happy stormworksing